May I give a very warm welcome to the Algeria British Business Council webinar, Algerian Education, the Drive to English Universities. The attendance today is approaching around 250 participants, and it is an indication of how modern Algeria is changing. The new generation has forced the change. They are hungry for English, recognizing its importance in communication, knowledge, the workplace. And in response, both the Algerian government and the private sector have played their part to make English accessible and with it, attendance at British universities. Today's webinar with 12 speakers is an overview of changing times and opportunities as we welcome Algerian students into the United Kingdom and look forward to a lifetime of friendship. The opportunities are open sky for all. We have received many questions and we'll do our best to answer them either today or later in the webinar sum summary I will send out. But first, no ABBC webinar is complete without the Prime Minister Boris Johnson's trade envoy to Algeria, Lord Risby, to open our webinar today. Lord Risby, a warm welcome to you. Well, thank you. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure for me to make a contribution to this discussion, and I thank the organizers for initiating this, as it could not be at a more appropriate time. As we begin to emerge from the COVID pandemic, which has been a time of great difficulty for many young people with schools and universities closed, we can look forward with increased confidence to the path ahead, not least because we have learned how valuable education technology can be. For a number of years, there has been a considerable effort to upgrade standards in British schools, and this has borne fruit. British universities have a reputation unmatched in Europe. Two out of the four world's greatest universities are in the United Kingdom. Of course, the pandemic reduced the number of students from abroad, but we are delighted about the substantial increase in numbers from the pre-COVID level, um, which is now happening in Britain. What is gratifying is that the government is fully and professionally backing our openness to attracting foreign students. We plan to increase foreign student numbers from the current level of 480,000 to 600,000. But let us be frank, in the past, the difficulties in obtaining visas was a drawback, which of course, where we lost out. This has totally, totally changed. The system is now radically different. In a recent poll commissioned by our government, fully 84% of students indicated that the UK was now the easiest place to get a visa to study. There is now a specific team in government authorized by our prime minister who has taken a personal interest in this matter to facilitate the expansion of our education offer. The demand for the English language is now more than clear and indeed additionally a number of British universities are establishing campuses in foreign countries to satisfy demand. The former Vice Chancellor of Bath University is leading on this, with the implementation being undertaken by the former Global Marketing Director of Cambridge University, a key group of 10 real professionals. As a consequence, there is enhanced enthusiasm to project the education sector. We are very well ranked on skills capacity and frameworks in education technology, and we are the top book exporter abroad. All of this is being overseen by a government minister chairing the education sector advisory group. When David Cameron as prime minister visited Algeria, the importance of the English language was discussed. I salute the activities of the British Council in Algiers, and of course, our new British school, and have myself open schools English language schools in Oran and Constantine, the demand is enormous. On a visit to Hassim Oussoud, I spoke at the local university and clearly the students understood my speech in English and how impressive those young Algerians were. We are fully committed to sharing our education offer in an organized and focused way. This means that the UK is leading on online education technology 
to assist this process. We are now more open to sharing our education and language capabilities in a way which comprehensively reflects a change of support and approach which has been thought about in depth and invested in. Thank you. Well, Lou Risby, thank you very much indeed. And what encouraging news, lots of new initiatives. And of course, it's very welcome that Prime Minister Boris Johnson is totally behind these initiatives and completely up to speed. And so we're delighted by your content of your message. So thank you very, very much indeed. I have pleasure now in moving on to the United Kingdom ambassador to Algeria, Her Excellency Sharon Wardle. She's our new ambassador to Algiers. She will become a friend to us all. Certainly her enthusiasm for Algeria is evident and with it a commitment to build and develop the sincere relationships and friendships between our two countries. May I give a warm welcome to Ambassador Sharon Wardle. So thank you very much. I'm absolutely delighted to be taking part in this webinar today. Um, as Lady Olga just mentioned, I recently arrived in, uh, in Algiers, just in, in January, um, and are very much looking forward to the role and collaborating with all of our UK and Algerian partners uh, to continue to strengthen the bilateral relationship. Um, delighted also that this is my first Arab um, uh, uh, sorry, Algerian um, British Business Council event, and I can't think of a more interesting subject on which to, to have my debut, and I'm very much looking forward to hearing from the, uh, from the different speakers taking part today. Um, even before I arrived in Algeria, in Algeria, I was very struck by the level of enthusiasm for the English language, accessing higher education in the UK, and also the potential for UK-Algeria partnerships across the wider education sector. There are, of course, multiple um, excellent examples of collaboration already in place through a number of British universities and also here on the ground, whether through the British Council or the, uh, the newly launched British School. Um, and I'm encouraged to hear from so many young Algerians who have expressed an interest in studying in the UK. Um, obviously now it is uh, even more straightforward for those wishing to go to university in the UK on, on the visa front, um, that we do not have a discriminatory visa system. Um, it's a point-based system. So um, open to students from all around the world. Um, but I think one remark I did just want to make before we started, um, I, I, I've heard a few people talking about the idea of, uh, you know, English language as somehow being a replacement for other language skills. You know, I very much don't view this as a sort of binary question. Um, I think it's absolutely incredible when I meet young Algerians, um, whether students or entrepreneurs, um, that they have this amazing talent for switching between um, different languages. So I've met many who are multilingual. So, so I think this is a superb skill and a reflection of the, uh, of the, the, the talents and potential um, that we see young people here. Um, and understandably, there is huge appetite for English. Um, and as we all know, younger people are very much more connected these days. Um, and so, uh, so we're seeing greater, uh, greater interaction, particularly over the past year, of course, through, uh, through the internet or virtual um, engagement. Um, so I'm very much in listening mode today, happy to respond to any questions as they may arise across the webinar, but, uh, but look forward to hearing more uh, about the sector. Thank you. Well, Ambassador, thank you very much indeed. It's such a joy to have you with us. And your uh, image did appear on the screen beautifully, so we know exactly who you are and where you are. So thank you very much indeed with all your encouragement and the good news, which you were building on the comments about visas with Lord Risby. But of course, without uh, our 
very good friend, the Algerian ambassador to London, we'd be nowhere. So I have great pleasure in giving a warm welcome to His Excellency Abdelrahman uh, Benguera. He is a really good friend to everyone who has come across. In his time, he's made met many, many people here. He has an open door, he's ever helpful. And in the context of this webinar, has a deep understanding of the demand for English by Algerian students and indeed, it was through his kindness that we had the good fortune to have on our program today, Lama, Lamia Hamini, who's doing a PhD in this country. But meanwhile, may I give a warm welcome to the Algerian Ambassador to UK, His Excellency Abdelrahman uh, Benguera. Over to you, Ambassador. Hello, uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, Lady Olga, I'd like to thank you once again for the <laughs> the nice and kind words that you have. And uh, I would like to thank you for organizing this webinar and uh, for suggesting this subject, which is really at the heart of the reform that the Algerian government is conducting to further modernize the Algerian university programs so they can keep up with the rapid progress of technologies and management worldwide. Nowadays, as you know, it's rather difficult for a student to engage in advanced research in any field if he does not master the English language. Today, most theses and research papers of quality are published in English. Having said that, someone might ask, what is the place of the English language in Algeria, especially in higher education? Well, in fact, the English language has always been present in Algeria after independence and since the 1970s, the United Kingdom was and still is the second destination after France for Algerian students wishing to pursue their studies or benefit from training abroad. The United States was the third country. In, uh, in the early 90s, a number of British universities had study programs with Algerian universities involving exchange of students and professors and organization of conferences and seminars this type of relation and cooperation had produced really excellent results and really want, we want really to see them uh, being encouraged and being in effect. Uh, I would like to mention that a bilateral agreement was signed in 2014 to enroll 500 Algerian students in more than 50 British universities in PhD programs most of these students are about to finish their studies in specialties such as linguistic, English literature, translation, and interpretation. It's worth noting that the great majority of these students, that is more than 90%, are female, and most of them, they do not come just from the uh, big cities in Algeria, but really from uh, uh, on the inside of the country. So it's really scattered all around the country. Uh, I would like also to mention that an agreement that this agreement that was signed by the two countries, the bilateral agreement, includes also the mobility of British researchers and uh, university teachers to Algeria in order to participate in scientific and academic activities and to promote, of course, the teaching of the English language. There's also a program of cooperation called Exceptional National Program, which was launched in 2006. This program, which usually lasts between 12 and 18 months, is aimed at Algerian teachers and researchers who are in the final phase of their doctoral thesis, generally in scientific fields such as physics, mechanical and electrical engineering, architectures, and a number of other subjects. And a great number of these students have benefited from this program, which is about to, to end, and we really hope that it will be renewed. Uh, moreover, the two countries are in the final phase of negotiating a draft memorandum of understanding, which will establish an Algerian British Technical Commission, which will deal with higher education and scientific research. Algeria has also academic relations with the Republic of Ireland. There are about, as we speak today, uh, 140 Algerian students pursuing PhD English programs in Irish universities as part of an agreement signed two years ago by the governments of the two countries. This is at the level of higher education. Now, what about the level of primary, middle, and high school in Algeria? I would like to mention the opening last year of the British school in Algiers that accepts Algerian and uh, international pupils. 
three years ago, we had also the opening of an American school in Algiers with the support of the US government. I should also mention the emerging private business schools in large cities such in Algiers, where English is the language that is taught. And it's also important, you know, when we talk about these uh, actions and uh, uh, initiatives, it's important and to keep in mind that in Algerian public schools, uh, all pupils that are at the age of 12 and over until they finish their studies, uh, they all attend English courses for at least three hours a week. As we can see from all these uh, achievements of what I said, there is a real determination in Algeria to promote the English language in cooperation with the UK. The same cooperation exists with the United States, with, which offers uh, assistance and facilities to encourage the expansion of the English language or the English American language in coordination with American universities. Uh, today, uh, I believe that most Algerian students pursuing scientific and management studies see the learning of English as really a wide open window on an ever evolving world and a way and a mean to progress academically and professionally. Finally, I wish to reiterate the commitment of the Algerian government to further promote the English language gradually, but with determination, not only in higher education, but in all fields and sectors of the economy. I believe, and the government of Algeria believe that multilingualism is really a source of enrichment and the strength for the Algerian people who are by nature open to cultures and civilization. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, thank you very much indeed for giving such an amazing overview of all the initiatives that the Algerian government has taken. Of course, I have seen over a period of 17 years how it has developed with these new initiatives and I totally accept that it is part of the reform of the Algerian government as it looks forward into the next 10 years or so. But these initiatives are very exciting and um, they certainly tell us a lot about the direction of travel for Algeria in the knowledge uh, market. So Excellency, thank you very, very much indeed for being with us today and giving us such a full account. Now, for in greater depth, I'm going to turn to the Algerian Ministry of Higher Education, the Deputy Director, Madame Yasmin Kalou. You are an example of modern Algeria with perfect English and with it an understanding of the Algerian students' dreams to, have their, uh, to reach a British university. And with their perfected professional and language skills, they will clearly be playing a key role for Algeria tomorrow. But uh, Madam Kalu, may I hand over to you because I know you have much to tell us. Uh, yes, of course. Thank you very much for this uh, great initiative for us to speak about uh, cooperation uh, in higher education, uh, especially when it comes to uh, English uh, language. Uh, so it's a great pleasure for us uh, to share this uh, great moment of cooperation uh, with you. Well, it goes without saying that English language is the main language of higher education and research. First, assuring a visibility of Algerian universities. Second, being competitive at worldwide level in the field of research. Third, getting accreditation for some specific courses. Fourth, being interactive with modern higher education requirements mm -hmm. are all objectives that can only be achieved if English language is introduced and widely spread among the Algerian academic community, be it in human sciences or pure and experimental sciences. The main aim of the higher education sector is to enable any Algerian graduates to be at least whatever is the field of a level of B2 when he or she graduates, a level that should allow any student in any field to be able to write fluently, speak fluently, and most of all, <coughs> to be able to publish. Algerian cooperation is based on a holistic approach, which means that it goes within the framework of developing a, a policy of good governance, enhancing employability chances, chances for new graduates, and developing scientific research. So the main aim for us 
in higher education is to train the students with a strong capacity of resilience who is able to build a project to generate wealth in Algerian society and worldwide, why not? Then create as well job opportunities. There are different cooperation programs for English language that link Algeria to UK. Project one would be the 500 scholarships uh, students who have been sent to UK. Those scholarships were funded at 100% by Algeria and they led to a very high number of co-published papers. Project two is the project of employability in collaboration with the British Council. That it comes within two phases and it will end by March, 2023. It has been launched in different cities in Algeria Algiers, Mostaganem, Biskra, Gelma, Tlemcen. Its role and aim is to enhance the, among um, the teachers the capacity to create uh, tools, orienting tools, and to be able to link companies to universities, as well as to show how to seek for job opportunities and to understand more uh, local and international business. Project three is uh, what is called the expert certification project. It's a project that is linked to uh, the uh, teaching uh, sector. In fact, uh, in 10 different universities in Algeria, uh, certain teachers of level A and B, assistant professors, have been trained on how to supervise students. Project four is the Green Universities Project. Uh, it's based on issues uh, of climate change and environmental uh, management uh, mm -hmm. that uh, we want to uh, make uh, very, that we want to make our students aware of in universities. Project five, it's the entrepreneurship project and uh, which aim is to help uh, with the social economic, economic insertion of new graduates. Well, uh, for project one, uh, we have uh, um, noticed some limitations in the application of the project throughout the years and with our students. Um, the project has been financed and funded at 100% by Algeria. It would have been interesting and very helpful if, the, uh, if our partner, UK, could uh, bring financial support as well. Uh, we have faced uh, another limitation is that we have faced some issues with the reception of students when arriving uh, to UK as they have had some uh, language issues. And for this, we have prepared what we call a pre-sessional course um, uh, in UK. But um, an important issue faced there was that the teachers uh, who were supposed to be uh, helping the students um, were not uh, exactly uh, meeting the qualifications we were uh, expecting. International cooperation in the field of higher education uh, is not limited to uh, the acquisition of language. Uh, it encompasses um, some international uh, challenges in scientific research too. Some of them are uh, renewable energy, sustainable development, agribusiness, desertification, energy security, and human health. As well as we can, uh, we should add that when it comes to English language acquisition and learning, we have some other offers from other countries than UK uh, that allow us to send our students uh, abroad and that these experiences with some uh, countries were uh, really uh, a success. Well, now coming uh, to the end, uh, speaking about the future perspectives of cooperation in the field of higher education uh, with UK, specifically when it comes to English language, uh, we aim at creating joint masters with British universities. Um, we uh, are interested in the exchange of experiences, especially when it comes to the managing of the student boom uh, that we are facing in Algeria. Um, uh, of course, uh, we would be very uh, keen to 
get to know the best practices abroad to bring them here and uh, to help our new graduates in professional insertion with specific programs and projects. And uh, last but not least, uh, trying to reach some quality insurance and international uh, standards. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much indeed, Madame Kalu. I was very interested in the sheer range of activities you're trying to support in research. Um, <coughs> year, being the year of it's the Climate Change Conference, I noticed your emphasis on green universities, project and climate change. I also have noted your comment about whether there'll be any support for scholarships from the United Kingdom for Algerian students. I'm sure there is a mechanism for that. And I think that our uh, university speakers may have some thoughts, but I have to say your presentation was terrific. <laughs> Absolutely loved it and very much to the point. And certainly nobody could say that Algeria is not making a huge effort itself. So thank you, um, Madam Kalu. So I'm now going to turn to a more British perspective. Um, the British Council Algeria, the director is Orlando Edwards. He is new to Algeria, or well, not that new now, but he's very welcome, bringing a lot of energy and commitment. The British Council, of course, is very well established. It's a trusted name, and they are supported by the British government and have brought with them years of experience in bringing countries together. That's what they do. But Orlando has been very interesting, and he will talk about it. He commissioned an in-depth study of the growth of English in Algeria, uh, both for the purpose of study itself and indeed its impact in the workplace. And the ABBC have now been given permission to make it available to all, but far better to hear from Mr. Orlando Edwards, the director of the British Council in Algiers. Welcome, Orlando. Thank you very much, uh, Lady Olga, and um, thank you, Your Excellencies, uh, for your speeches and, and uh, Madame Kalou. Um, so um, what I wanted to do today was just give a, a, a very brief overview. Uh, I think, uh, as Lady Olga has inferred, the British Council is most famous throughout the world for our work um, teaching English, whether that's to young learners, to teenagers or adults. However, to embed systemic change uh, requires systemic reform. And we have a long and successful history from around the world of teacher training. We know that investing in continued professional development of teachers leads to long lasting benefits and results in improved national education systems. And so a lot of our work revolves therefore uh, around working closely with ministers to deliver programs that improve quality assurance. For example, the quality of teaching in universities, school leadership and professionalism. Positive results flow from that, whether that's improved access for girls and marginalized children in schools, or the internationalization of higher education sectors and more collaborative research and higher profile of institutions, which flows from that. As Lady Olga has, has just mentioned, uh, we recently um, commissioned a piece of research. Indeed, most of our work is, is evidence-based on, on what research tells us. Uh, I've summarised some of the findings from the report. It's quite a long report, but I'm very grateful to uh, the Algerian Britain Business Council for publishing it on their website, and you can read it at your leisure. Uh, I'm not going to be able to chunter through the 60-odd pages here, but the key findings here I've, I've summarized on this slide. And I think the uh, one that perhaps leaps out to, to, of most interest to the people here at this meeting today is the one around the labor market and the needs. Uh, to summarize, uh, in fact, perhaps to paraphrase, the labor market needs are not currently well served by the education system, which is to say that uh, graduates are not necessarily leaving university with the language skills that they need to succeed and prosper in an increasingly globalised world. Lord Risby mentions the importance of uh, online learning resources and the British Council responded quickly last year during COVID-19 to increase the online support for teachers and learners. The uptake here in Algeria was extremely impressive. Uh, teaching for Success, for example, which included three courses, The Classroom and the World, which focuses on 21st century skills, 
uh, teaching and learners, lessons and teaching uh, were amongst the most popular. Here in Algeria, our data tells us that 715 teachers uh, took up these courses and that ranks Algeria third across the whole of the Middle East and North Africa. What's most striking with these figures here is the percentage of, 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 of uptake across North Africa. 75% of all, all uh, participants across the Middle East and North Africa came from North Africa. Another example of a, a MOOC or a mass open online course that we promoted last year was preparing for work. Algeria again scored very highly. It ranked fourth globally this time, ahead of Morocco, Indonesia, Italy and Bangladesh amongst others and only just behind India. So what have we learned uh, fr from Algeria in 2020, our own experiences, the British Council? Well, the main thing that we learned last year is the value of English is increasingly widely recognized. From the uptake of the, the, the MOOCs, the mass open online courses, the appetite for 21st century skills and continued professional development of teachers remains extremely strong. From our teaching center, we learned that face-to-face -face learning is still preferred to online learning. We also uh, glean from, from our data that demand for exams, uh, for qualifications, respected UK qualifications such as IELTS remains extremely strong. And that our online culture resources, British Council promoted theatre and dance, UK theatre and dance, film and museums, which all went into lockdown last year and ramped up their online offer were all extremely popular. Finally, last but not least, we launched our own digital library last year and the membership in Algeria was extremely impressive, uh, demonstrating the appetite for UK culture as far down south as Tindov and, and other uh, remote wilayas. Moving forwards then, I think I would like to uh, reiterate what Madame Kello was saying about the need for a holistic approach. Uh, in schools, that means school inspectors, teachers working together to drive curriculum and assessment the way that students are taught and tested and that collective effort will help learners get the English skills that they need to fulfill their potential. In the higher, edu higher education sector this means that universities need to work more closely with, with, with businesses. They need to work together so that graduate skills match what's needed to get a job to be successful at university or to excel in international research. So my question really for the, for, for the audience today and the panelists is what role can the private sector play in all of this? Finally, uh, before I close, uh, I'm very pleased that Madame Kello uh, mentioned the work that's been done in greening Algeria's campuses and climate change. Of course, the UK is hosting COP26 in Glasgow in November this year, and the British Council is running a series of webinars as well as a competition to encourage uh, Algerian students to cooperate with UK university students on creating greener campuses. This Thursday, we launch our webinar series. The very first webinar is taking place. You can register and find out more details on our website. Thank you very much, everybody. Orlando, my thanks to you for giving such an incredible overview and also how exciting that you have this digital library which is available to all, no matter how remote people are in Algeria, but also your understanding of the need for closer cooperation between universities and the workplace, um, and indeed your whole program to support uh, the teaching of English. Um, so we clearly look for much more engagement with you. I'm delighted to hear about your program on renewable energy. This is very much a thing to safeguard our future. Um, but thank you very, very much indeed. Now, in turning to the private sector, I'm going to turn to the Oxford Business Group and the director for Africa, which includes Algeria, of course, is Bernardo Brizzoni. Now, Oxford Business Group is already known in Algeria. They provide advice and guidance to the business climate in the country and have observed the demand for English education and skills in the workplace, which is really becoming the theme of today. And their director, Bernardo Grizzoni, has now seen how this demand has grown from a business perspective. So over to you, Bernardo. Thank you very much, Lady Olga. It's a pleasure and an honor to be among so many distinguished speakers. 
a, a brief overview of some facts and figures that can help uh, understanding a little bit more about the Algeria's education sector and the role that the private sector can, can play uh, working together with, with the government. Um, so just starting from the, the very beginning and very, very basic demographics, uh, the population is at 43 million currently uh, and uh, around 18, 18 million or 24 years old and less. Uh, the literacy rate uh, at, in 2018 was at 81.4%, which is uh, considerably good. Uh, and if we analyze the numbers of primary, secondary and higher education, we, have, we are at more than 4 million enrolled in, in primary education, 4 million in secondary education and more than 3 million uh, in higher education. Uh, if we see the, the school enrollment uh, for ter tertiary education, according to, to the World Bank, uh, we can see that Algeria is at uh, more than uh, 51% uh, in 2018, and which is considerably uh, better than its neighbors, Morocco and Tunisia, uh, at 30%. Um, and we have seen also um, a, a significant increase in the past decade in this uh, tertiary enrollment for Algeria, which I think uh, translates quite well the, the efforts that have been um, pushed by the government in, in increasing this, these figures. The education system is managed by the Ministry of National Education, the Ministry of Higher Education and Scientific Research, uh, and the Ministry of Vocational and Education and Training. Um, one thing that I, that I didn't mention in the previous slide is that also we also have uh, more than 500,000 um, students currently enrolled in over 1,200 uh, technical and vocational training institutions uh, from the government. Uh, and in the budget, um, in, in the finance law 2021, uh, the budget allocation was 14.5% uh, for national education, which is second only to the Ministry of Defense, which I think is quite important to, to highlight while higher education was at 7% and vocational training at 1%. So I think that uh, reflects quite well that uh, the private sector also has um, quite a, a, a role to play or a space to, to, to play uh, within this uh, investment. Uh, among the government strategy, uh, I would like to highlight two, uh, two points that, um, that, that, that are very essential for this uh, discussion that we're having. Uh, one is that the government is seeking more and more collaborations between the industry and academic institutions. So in the last decade, we've had more than 13,000 agreements signed uh, between the Algerian government and the different uh, education related ministries uh, and private uh, mm -hmm. companies, many of them uh, international. Uh, a second point uh, that has been quite uh, expanded by the government is the digitalization of education um, with e-learning platforms being developed for teachers, for students, uh, and even for parents. Uh, this was already the case before uh, the pandemic, but this obviously, as it was a very global trend, uh, gained a lot of traction with the pandemic and a lot of opportunities with, with e-learning. Regarding private investment and the, the current role for private investment, um, in 2018, only 1% of total students in lower education uh, were enrolled in private schools. Uh, however, there are, there's a, a high average of uh, around 100 new lower education establishments being opened every year, um, which is a trend that, that has been being observed. Uh, while on what's, what regards higher education, there is only a handful of, of private registered universities. Um, so there's a lot of room, again, to, to, for private investment to, to play in this. Um, regarding the, the regulatory framework, um, it's something that we can consider still uh, under construction um, and it's still being defined. Uh, very recently at the end of 2020, uh, th there was a law still being passed in the parliament uh, to define the, the, the details uh, of, how, of how a private university should be established in, in Algeria. But one thing that we can tell or a few things that we can tell is that um, as it happens in pretty much every sector of the Algerian economy, Private establishments need to abide to the 5149 rule, and, and the rector of the university needs to be uh, an Algerian national. Um, just to finalize, and since this is the, the, the main subject, the key subject of, of this webinar, um, obviously, for, I mean, for obvious region, reasons, uh, the education sector has been linked with French language. Um, however, and it, uh, as it was very well raised by, by Madame Kalou and, and by Mr. Ambassador, uh, there's a, a huge uh, interest, growing interest from students and, uh, in, in enrolling um, in, in English academies, English schools, and a lot of new English schools um, uh, opening in the country. 
And especially in the recent years, there were several government initiatives that um, had the target of increasing English um, as, a, as a key language for uh, the higher education, for research, uh, and to have a, to play a, a larger role uh, within the country. Uh, the role, the, the, the target for this is to make Algeria more international uh, and have a higher impact in the academic world. Um, mm -hmm. And again, this is a great opportunity for uh, English universities, UK universities to uh, enhance its cooperation, enhance its role within the, their role within the country. Um, that, that's it for me. Thank you very much for your well, attention. Thank you very much indeed, Bernardo Brizzoni. I thought your yeah. comment that the Algerian government have invested so much into education that it comes second to defence is probably a lesson to countries all over the world. I can't think of anyone else has put such a deep commitment. And I think that the <coughs> development, as we've seen in earlier on in Madame Kalou's presentation, indeed by the ambassador, yeah of the investment in digitalization and how it's moving things on. So thank you very much for giving a perspective of how Algeria measures up against other countries. And I think it is amazing success. So I now again have great pleasure in turning to an Algerian private sector initiative. Uh, Lofty Ghazi is the founder of the British Study Center, NCUK Algeria. And Lofty has really been a driving force as an example of the, how the private sector can provide access to British universities. And he does this through the NCUK in the UK. And he has been linked with a number, through this mechanism, a number of British universities, which enables Algerian students to come to our country. And as background, I went to his first British Study Centre in Oran. Well, today he has a major facility in Algeria, in Algiers, five-storey building, and with exciting plans to expand. So bravo to the private sector and a warm welcome to Mr. Lotfi Ghazi of the British Study Centres. Over to you, Lotfi. Thank you, Lady Olga, your excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it was very excited to, to be here and to be part of this initiative. Uh, and I can just only pick up from uh, my, all my previous honorable speakers what they said on the appetite of English uh, in Algeria. And yes, uh, we have started with British Study Centers uh, in Iran uh, four or five years ago. And, you know, we noticed, you know, uh, the huge appetite, but also we did things with the difference uh, where we introduced uh, native teachers into Algeria. Yeah, the results was uh, phenomenal. But it leads us uh, to the other problem. How do, can we be able to reach uh, the whole country, uh, you know, whether uh, to the south, to the east, and all parts of Algeria? Uh, and that will, uh, we will be announcing as well a huge partnership with the uh, educational giant, uh, which is Pearson. Uh, we have signed with a new platform. It's an intelligent platform that runs through AI. Uh, not only it will be good for teachers, for students, as well, there's a part for businesses. Uh, and with this, uh, I can say when we started our NCK partnership two years ago, it was a very great success story, despite uh, the COVID situation and so on. Uh, so um, it was a, a very good exercise for us. Uh, I can say last year, we managed to have a 100% success rate uh, of our students going to the UK uh, with almost 80% of A's and A stars. Uh, we initially started with foundation courses, uh, business and management, as well as pre-master's program. Uh, our students moved on to the UK with no problems at all. Uh, and this year, we go into towards foundation with business and management of humanities, uh, engineering, as well as medical, only on foundation courses. Uh, we also started first year of international year one uh, as a university here in Algeria, and then students will pursue uh, their education in the UK. Uh, as well as medical masters, as well as pre-masters, they can start here. Uh, so going back again, there is a huge program we work in uh, on partnership. Uh, it's called the My Program. So it's My Individual Learning Environment. Uh, this program is a program that, that's aimed uh, to needs. So uh, all people that are not in education or form of work, uh, it's a program that can initially 
uh, employ about six, up to 60,000 people uh, to be mentors and assistants uh, to then train uh, adequately up to 2 million leads uh, in Algeria uh, through technology. That's, uh, and with this, there's been a partnership that uh, has been signed with Kevit UK, that I'm pretty sure that everybody knows, uh, Mazi Anderson, uh, to be part of this My Program, as well as using the platform with Pearson to initiate the program. And uh, yes, going back to now to the NCK, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure that Andy will uh, explain more uh, on all the programs that we do uh, from Algeria to the UK. So there we go. Thank you. Well, thank you very much indeed, Lotfi Ghazi. I should explain to our wider audience that his partnership with the Pearson Group is very significant. The Pearson Group yes, published the Financial Times in the United Kingdom. They're leading organization in the private sector for education. And I must say it's a great um, pleasure to hear their commitment and confidence in investing in Algeria and in this project. So there'll be a lot more to be heard on that score. So thank you very much indeed. And I welcome all your successes. So Lord Vigazi's um, British Study Centers, they uh, get their students, their students go on to the United Kingdom. And the route that many of them take is through the NCUK. And I want to introduce to you the Associate Director for Africa, Andrew Strohan, because it's really through Andy Strohan that he will describe how the growing tide of English students has developed and how they facilitate Algerian students into the United Kingdom. So currently, I should say he has a hotline to over 20 British universities. And for those who are devotees of Scotland, which is my heritage, also with the Robert Gordon University in Aberdeen. But anyway, Andy, a big welcome to the uh, webinar. Thank you very much, Lady Olga. And I think uh, the definite theme from today's session is uh, very much uh, one of optimism for uh, the growing ties between the UK and Algeria moving forward. And we're certainly very proud to be working with, uh, you know, key Algerian private businesses and really helping young people in Algeria make that big step abroad. So um, thanks very much for having us today. Um, so uh, my colleague Lotfi has already gone through um, sort of how the partnership works, but essentially um, NCUK working with British Study Centres and NCUK Algeria uh, are really designed to help uh, the young people of Algeria get guaranteed progression into a, a wide range of genuinely world-class universities. And um, we've got a few different levels of program. Um, so we have our most popular international foundation year, which routes on to over 4,000 different degree programs. And that really is designed for those students who are graduating from their Algerian baccalaureate qualification. That takes those students, allows them to study in Algeria for one year, and then they will get progression onto a wide range of universities following on from that. We also have our International Year One programme, which is equivalent to the first year of a UK degree. And I've noticed in the, the question and answer function that there are quite a few questions about affordability and scholarships. Uh, the International Year One qualification really is something which can help sort of reduce some of the financial burden as what it would cost to, to study abroad by allowing the student to begin their degree program in Algiers. So um, that, that program itself is suitable not only for Algerian back students, but also potentially for those students who are progressing through the French back qualification as well. So something to bear in mind there. We also, for anybody joining us who is interested in looking at a postgraduate qualification, and there are many benefits of doing a postgraduate qualification in the UK, uh, we do have a, a programme called our pre-master's qualification, which is designed not only for those who are wanting to go into the likes of business or into engineering, but we also have a medical field, which is really looking at providing students with the support and um, sort of the skill set that they will need to then progress and perform very well at a British university. So um, there are sort of all level, different levels of program. Um, I know a big theme has been around uh, the, the, the increasing success around visas. 
But again, NCUK students, uh, we have over 3,000 students across our study network annually. And of those, well over 99.5% are successful in getting their visa. And again, that is due to the levels of support that each and every one of our students receive throughout their journey with NCUK, but also through our connections that we have with our wonderful university network who sort of complete the jigsaw when it comes to, uh, to the students progressing on to university. So um, yeah, there's some really exciting initiatives. Algeria has been a fantastic uh, new market for NCUK. We really are very optimistic about what the future holds. We think that Algeria could easily become uh, one of the biggest partners and biggest markets that NCUK works in. So very exciting times ahead. And thank you all very much for allowing us to be part of this initiative this morning. Thank you, Lady Olga. Well, thank you, Andrew Struan, for your very kind remarks, but also the encouragement that comes from the British side and how you can facilitate and support students. And in that regard, I'm going to move to the Chief Executive Officer of UK, uh, NCUK, Professor John Brewer. Now, um, Andrew Stru and his Druan's success is very much linked to his work close working relationship with the CEO, with Professor Brewer. Professor Brewer sees to it that students get into the university dependent upon the uh, grades they achieve and they also to get to the subject they want to study. And every year, over 3,000 students are helped by him, and of that, a phenomenal rise in Algerian students. So, Professor Brewer, I'm just really wondering if you could possibly explain to us just that how you help the students get into the right university and choose the right subjects. Lady Olga, thank you. Lord Risby, Your Excellencies, thank you, first of all, for the invitation to speak at this webinar today. It really is exciting, and on behalf of myself, and NCUK were delighted to take part. Um, NCUK was established in, in 1987, and uh, as my colleague Andy Strawn has said, we offer an international foundation year, which is effectively uh, the equivalent of an international baccalaureate or an A-level. And we were established by initially uh, a consortium of universities in the north of the United Kingdom, but we now have uh, a range of partner universities all over the UK and indeed around the world. And those universities will guarantee a place to a student who has studied and passed our international foundation year. And of course, as my colleague and friend Lotvi Ghazi has just said, uh, we are delighted to be delivering our international foundation year and indeed other qualifications such as our international year one uh, out of the British Study Centre in Algeria. Whereas you've just said, Lady Olga, we've seen uh, phenomenal growth in the number of students who are studying uh, there. And we're delighted just looking at the data this year that um, over 40 students have applied to 20 uh, top universities in the United Kingdom this year. And I think picking up on Lord Risby's earlier comments, uh, it really is important to remember that uh, many of the top universities around the world are based in the UK and indeed have English as their main language of study. Uh, and I think we also are very aware that a university education, which we guarantee to our students who study our International Foundation Year, can genuinely transform their lives, not just through the education that they receive, but through the way in which they can become global citizens of the world, in which, of course, very importantly, they can go on and have uh, long and productive careers. And I think it's very important that universities ensure that the degree programmes that they offer are vocational, they do equip the students not just with the learning, but with the lifelong skills that make them valuable to employers. And I think picking up on the point that uh, Orlando Edwards made uh, and the role that the private sector can play, I think is something that's also very important. I think the private sector can ensure that universities have vocational degrees that ensure that the students have long and productive careers. I think as well, something that has been spoken about a lot in the um, in the Q&A section is, is the role of scholarships. And again, I think the private sector can help with scholarships. But I think, think equally importantly, it's very important that students and their families are aware the scholarships don't necessarily come from the British government or indeed from the Algerian government. Where they will often come from is the university themselves. So I would encourage any student, whether they're studying our International Foundation Year or any other qualification in Algeria to make contact with their university or universities of choice that they are looking at 
and see what scholarships they have to offer. Sometimes they will be for academic excellence, but in other areas they may be for sport, or they may even be just to ensure that we can widen the access of students that come to university. So there are many scholarships there. There are scholarships for men, there are scholarships for women. Uh, we have one of our partners, Aston University, that offers a scholarship for women in engineering. So I would really encourage people to dig deep beneath the surface of the university that they are applying to and find out what those scholarships are. Uh, I think, as I say, in summary, we are delighted that so many students from NCUK have been able to study our International Foundation Year and go to their university of choice. Since we were established, over 35,000 students have obtained our qualification and gone to universities. In any one year, we have 3,000 students studying in many countries around the world, including, of course, in Algeria. And we are very proud of our partnership uh, in Algeria with British Study Centre. We are very, very keen for that to grow and develop and indeed to change the lives, transform the lives of so many young people uh, and to do that in a way that will give them not just uh, great studying, but also, as I've said, uh, long and very productive careers. So thank you again for the opportunity to, to present today. Uh, Lady Olga, that, that's it for me, I'll hand back to you. Well, thank you, Professor Brewer. And thank you also for highlighting the issue about financing the studies and the scholarship routes that are available um, I think this has given me a great comfort to Algerian students as they are indeed from all over the world, but I think this will be very carefully noted. So thank you, Professor Brewer, very much indeed. Well, we're now going to turn to a British university, Liverpool John Moores University, Matthew Ver. He is the regional manager looking after students coming from all over the world, but particularly from Middle East and North Africa. And his role is to help students in to settle in his university, but not only help them in that regard, but with their next stage of work experience, finding them placements with major international companies. And he will also uh, explain the impact of the new uh, rules and, uh, on visas, which the British government have recently announced and were mentioned by Lord Risby. Over to you. Thanks, Lady Olga, and thank you to our esteemed guests. It's great to have this opportunity to share with you some thoughts on behalf of the, the university sector here in the UK. Um, I reflect on attending the launch of the Algerian PhD programme back in 2014 uh, and, and being at that joyous event with uh, colleagues from universities across Algeria uh, and then seeing seven years later, pretty much almost to the week, uh, we're having this great occasion today to celebrate the continued partnership between our two countries and the, indeed the growth and interest of, of, of English education, whether that's English language education in Algeria, but particularly looking at university uh, as the destination in the UK. I've just briefly had a look at the numbers and the growth in numbers of students coming to the UK from Algeria. And from, from 2014 to, to 2020, we can see a growth in over 200% of the students choosing to come to the UK in the last three years in particular, a 20% year on year growth in the UK. And I think uh, as, as we've all said, a big part of that is the, is the growing interest and desire for an English language education, but it's also the recognition of the quality of, of a British education and the quality of a British degree. Uh, as Lady Olga mentioned, one of the things that the UK uh, university sector is committed to is to providing not only a fantastic student experience in the UK at, at wonderful universities at great cities across the UK, but it's also about giving them uh, students the skills and experience they need to be equipped for the workplace. And all UK universities uh, offer a wide range of courses, but particularly give a great focus on the opportunities there are both during your studies and now post studies, and particularly in employment. Uh, students who come and study the UK, of course, have the opportunity to work while they are studying up to 20 hours. Many of our courses offer students the opportunity for a placement, whether that be in the traditional, what we would call a sandwich year, where a student takes a year in industry in the, between the second and third year, or whether it's um, a two year masters where there's a, a placement embedded. So there are many opportunities for students to gain that experience while they study. As Lady Olga says, UK universities uh, work with national and international companies um, to provide students those opportunities um, to gain that experience 
And indeed, one of the great things that we now have uh, as a UK university sector uh, is the growth and appetite of the UK government to grow the number of, of students from around the world who study with us. As was highlighted at the very beginning of our presentation, there's an appetite to grow that from over 400,000 to over 600,000. And one of the strategic ways the British government is doing that is to make the visa opportunity for students coming to study in the UK even more attractive. And, and one of the things I really wanted to highlight today is, is, the, is the great opportunity students now have when they graduate in the UK to stay for an additional two years. That means a student now coming to the UK for an undergraduate degree who graduates from this summer onwards will be able to stay and work in the UK by applying for an additional visa and stay for two years. If you've done a master's in the UK, that'll be also the opportunity for an additional two years. And those who are fortunate and bright enough to do a PhD in the UK will have the chance to do an additional three years work in the UK. So all of those provide a fantastic opportunity for that work experience in the UK, for us in the UK and in and the education sector to have the opportunity to have some of the brightest and best students um, in Algeria, not only studying with us, but hopefully with working with some fantastic national and international companies in the UK. So it's definitely an exciting time and it's great to have this opportunity to share with you. Thank you, Lady Olga. Well, thank you, Matthew, very, very much for giving such a wonderful overview of what happens to a student when they have graduated because there's life after that, how to get them effectively into the workplace. And that experience, of course, is invaluable and it makes them more uh, engaging and more attractive to multinationals to employ them. So I hope we will also keep in very good touch with you, Matthew Blair of uh, Liverpool John Moores University. And thank you very, very much indeed. I now turn to Birmingham University. The regional manager for the Middle East uh, is David Rice, and Birmingham University rightly is very proud of his academic achievements, and with it, the knowledge on the value of a British UK degree. Uh, David Rice, being uh, the head of the international department, is well aware not only the commitments and demands and the qualities required by the students, but also he's very conscious of the career impact that a UK degree will bring. So um, may I give a warm welcome to David Rice to talk through this a bit more. Uh, many thanks, Lady Olga, and, and thanks as well to everyone that has spoken before me. Um, so I'm, I'm here to talk about the, the value of a UK degree. And I think luckily for me, um, it's already been said in, in so much of what um, some of the other, uh, the other speakers have said today. Um, but I think for me, um, I've kind of highlighted four key points that I want to go through just to, to really uh, evidence the value that one gets in a UK degree. So I think the first point is the, the global reputation of higher education and of universities in the UK. Now, our reputation is partly steeped in our history, with many of our universities centuries old and being a, a seat of education for, for, for centuries. But also, it's our current reputation and, and how we perform in the modern world today. 18 of the top 100 universities in the world are located in the UK, and four of the top 10 are also in the UK. So that really goes to show that the quality of the universities in the UK is some of the best in the world. I think in terms of the second point, which is around uh, the, reason, uh, the reason why we're so highly ranked, uh, and that's because of the quality of the people we have at our universities. Um, and what I mean by that is, is firstly our academics. We have some of the most uh, brilliant minds in the world teaching at our universities. And not only are they teaching, but they're also carrying out research. And what this means for students is that they're being taught by people that are at the forefront of knowledge in their particular fields, and they're really getting a, an excellent and exceptional value uh, of their UK degree because of that. They're not just being taught by textbooks. They're being taught things that are actually at the front line of making a real impact and a real difference in the real world um, today. Not only do we have some of the best academic staff, but we have some of the best students as well. Getting into a university in the UK is competitive. We have high entry requirements. We have high English language requirements. And we have 
high requirements because of the quality of the course that, that we provide and the quality of the education that we provide. Um, but that means that we have the very best students that come to our universities. So not only will you be studying with great academics, you'll be studying alongside great students um, as well. And, and you yourself will be a great student if you are studying at one of our uh, universities. The third element of what I think uh, evidences the value of a UK degree is the quality of our facilities that we have at UK universities. Um, I'm regularly astounded by the facilities that we have at the University of Birmingham, both in terms of some of our academic facilities, um, the incredible investment we've had in building new engineering facilities, new engineering labs, a new life sciences centre, um, and, and many, many other um, examples of, of us providing outstanding academic facilities. But our universities don't only provide those academic facilities at such a high level, we provide the facilities that go alongside that with excellent sporting facilities, music, library, um, and even just having modern lecture theatres designed to support education uh, in the modern day. Um, all of these facilities really help to, to again, to demonstrate that value of a UK degree because students get to uh, study and, and use all these facilities, um, which is what they would expect, uh, again, in the modern, uh, the modern age. And then finally, and, and this really picks up a few of the points that, that Matthew was making as well, the real sense of uh, a, the value of a UK degree is in the careers that our students go on to after having studied in the UK. Um, and we, uh, you would expect that. We have great facilities, we have great staff, we have a great reputation. Of course, our students go on to do great things, but we don't stand by our reputation alone. And, and as Matthew said, we work really closely with employers to make sure that employability is, is factored into the courses that we deliver. And not only that, we make sure that students leave our universities with the skills they need to succeed and, and get the jobs that they want to get uh, and have successful uh, future careers. So I think that pretty much summarizes the, the key points I'd make on, on why the UK uh, is such a, a valuable destination to complete a degree. Well, thank you very much indeed, David Rice. I would like to ask one question, which maybe also Matthew might be able to answer as well. Which are the subjects which are most in demand by Algerian students in the UK? I think that's a, a great question. So at the University of Birmingham, we have around 15 students from Algeria currently studying with us. Um, and that has grown um, from about seven or eight, um, about five or six years ago. So it is on the increase. Um, the subjects are fairly varied, but the key subjects, I would say, are a lot of STEM based subjects and, and a lot of uh, science engineering. Um, but we also have interest, particularly in our business management programs. And we also have um, interest in our applied linguistics programs and translation as well. So they, they tend to be some of the areas that are, are the most popular for us, for Algerian students. Thank you very much indeed. Well, Matthew Vail, do you have any comment to make about the topics, subjects that they prefer to study? It's, it's a similar range, yes, definitely STEM, engineering, computer science, uh, but also those looking at business, accounting and finance um, would also be popular, I think. Well, thank you very much indeed. Now, the proof of the pudding, as we say in English, is really the result. And I have a very great pleasure in introducing Lamia Hamini, who is Algerian. She is studying for a, a PhD at Northampton University. And in conversation with Lamia, I realized her commitment to learning English began when she was just a child, aged 10. But I think Lamia, you're a wonderful example. Why are you in England? Why did you choose to come to our country? Of course, you're very, very welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Lady Olga. Uh, it is such a pleasure for me to be with you today and to tell you about my experience with English. So as I said on the phone, over the phone call that my story with English goes back to when I was a child. I think I was about 10 or 11 years old, where I remember my dad used to teach me the capitals of the word uh, on a map. And then I don't know for whatever reason, I was fascinated by the UK. So I was asking him loads of questions and um, about the history and the geography of the country. And um, 
since then, my devotion to learn English never stopped. Um, I just I started learning English by myself because at the time I was still in primary school, going to middle school, and I remember that I was always uh, the first in my uh, classroom because it was a little bit advanced in comparison to other students. And uh, obviously, I chose to study uh, a BA and an MA in uh, uh, in English. Uh, so we were taught language, civilizations, and literatures of English-speaking countries. And I was lucky to be one of the three valedictorians for five years. And we were offered uh, scholarships to do our PhDs in the UK. So it was a dream coming true for me personally. Um, so before we came here, we had to go uh, and do a lot of uh, trainings and exams to be qualified. And we had to do uh, our IELTS and we had to, to write our uh, research proposals and we had to uh, get in touch with potential supervisors. And then obviously uh, the process is uh, from there is very clear, like applying for a tier four visa and we came here. So we, uh, most of us like started straight away by doing research. Uh, we started by reading and writing. And I would say that like, it is a privilege to, to be at one of the UK's um, universities because there is a lot of um, um, access to uh, trainings and workshops. Uh, we have compulsory um, uh, um, classes that we have to do courses. And obviously we have to meet with our supervisors once a month. And uh, we're progressing, like we used to progress very, very like well, but now with the COVID, obviously I think most of us are progressing at a slower pace. Um, I would say uh, once we go back to our home country, uh, me and uh, another uh, group of students were aiming at optimizing and upgrading the research standards as well as the research integrity and ethics. Uh, we think that there, we need more diversity when it comes to treating uh, topics, especially in English or uh, across the other departments. Uh, we think, or I personally think that we need to invest more into training uh, teachers to become uh, better at, well, uh, at teaching students at primary, uh, at, uh, sorry, at middle and secondary schools. I think that uh, from my own experience, I always knew that in order to learn a language, you have to be passionate about it and you have to love it to, to be able to, to, to teach the students. Um, I, I, th I, uh, I remember that when I was uh, 19 or 20 years old, I was teaching at private schools and my students um, were like around 12 years old. So they were going into first year middle school and within three, four months, they were able to, to write paragraphs, to present themselves. And uh, I'm still in touch with them. So I'm very proud of my students. Um, I would say that Overall, uh, my experience with English has been and will always be my passion. And I'm very proud to be here. And thank you so much for this opportunity. Well, Lamia, thank you for giving us such a heartfelt and enthusiastic account how much you clearly have enjoyed your studies here and how much you want to carry <coughs> your English back to your own country. But thank you all very much indeed as I conclude our webinar today. The whole idea was to give a snapshot of how Algeria is really geared for reform, for the future, for economic development. Economic development very much depends on the quality of students that come out of the universities. So thank you all very much indeed. Ambassador uh, Monsieur Benguera, Ambassador Sharon Wardle, thank you. Thank you, Lord Risby, for leading us into our discussion today. And thank you all to our participants, because I know we will remain in good touch. And what an amazing day. Goodbye, and thank you. Until next time. <laughs>